Hey everybody, this is Ms. Berry. In this, sec in this video, we're going to go over section um, 3.4, which is called Valid Arguments and Fallacies. Um, first, I want to talk to you a little bit about what an argument is. Um, then we'll talk about um, the pieces that make up an argument. We'll look at some examples where we have to identify parts of the argument. And then we will look at um, how we determine whether an argument is valid or invalid. All right, so this, this is the formal definition of an argument. It says an argument consists of a series of logic, logical statements. Um, this is my definition of an argument, um, which comes from your textbook. It says that an argument, um, excuse me, an argument is a specific line of reasoning. We'll just say it's a line of reasoning so it's a line of reasoning that is meant to support a particular belief or idea. <clears throat> so a line of, an argument is a line of reasoning that is meant to support a particular belief or idea. That's what an argument is defined as when we're talking about um, logic. An argument is made up of a premise and a conclusion. So it has two parts. Um, the premise is also called the hypothesis, also called the assumption. And it says the premise is a statement at the beginning of an argument. All right, so the premise comes at the beginning and it's used to support the conclusion. And a conclusion is the ending statement of an argument. Oops. All right, so the, the premise is the statement at the beginning of an argument that's used to support the conclusion. And the conclusion is the ending statement of an argument. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at an example. Oh, oh, excuse me. First, we're going to talk about these indicators. So this is a super helpful um, little list of words that will help you to be able to identify what part of the argument is the premise and what part is the conclusion. So some words that you may see that would indicate that you're looking at the premise would be words like as, as indicated by, because. I'm highlighting the ones that you'll see um, more often due to the fact that, for, for the reason that, given that, if, and as much as, in that, may be concluded from, may be inferred from, seeing that, since, and the reason that. So I've highlighted the ones that maybe are, that you'll see more often, um, more commonly used indicators of the premise. Some indicators of the conclusion would be words like accordingly, consequently, entails that, hence, implies that, it must be that, it follows that, so, then, therefore, thus, we may conclude that, we may infer that, whence, and wherefore. This is really good information for your index card for the next test. So we'll just say this is good info for your index card. So take a second and write those down. And these are going to be, this little table is going to be super helpful for the homework. Okay, let's look at an example now. The directions say, identify the premise of the following argument. It's really easy for us to slide by each other and assume the other person knows where we're coming from 
because we're family, Chung said. So we're supposed to take these four options here and identify which of these options is the premise. Okay, so we're looking for the premise here. Remember the premise is the beginning of the argument. And here are the words that indicate the premise, words like because, for, if, and since. Do you see any of those indicating words here? Yes, we see the word because. All right, so it says, the word because indicates that we're looking at the premise of the argument. So it says, because this is like the assumption or the hypothesis. Um, so because we are a family, um, that is the premise. All right, so we are a family is the premise. <clears throat> the conclusion would be the other part of the sentence. It's really easy for us to slide by each other and assume the other person knows where we're coming from. So that is a result of the fact that these people are a family. All right, so the premise is the um, assumption or the hypothesis, and the other part of the sentence um, is the conclusion the part that follows from the premise. All right, so let's look at um, a couple more examples. Here we have um, just a matching example, very simple. It says, choose the term that best matches the given definition. A statement at the beginning of an argument used to support the conclusion, that would be the premise, right? So the statement that's at the beginning of an argument is called the premise. All right, let's look at another example. This time they're asking us to find the conclusion. Identify the conclusion of the following argument. If you're on a tight budget, it can be difficult to eat healthy. And no, it's not a myth that healthy food is more expensive. All right, so remember, I see this word if here. Let me see what kind of indicator that was. If is an indicator of the premise. Okay, so if is an indicator of the premise. All right, so that means that we have this word if, and the part that follows that is going to be the premise. So the premise is you're on a tight budget. That's the assumption that we're going off of. So this is the assumption, but we're asked to find the conclusion. So what follows from the assumption that you're on a tight budget? It follows, right, that it can be difficult to eat healthy. So it can be difficult to eat healthy if, our assumption, you're on a tight budget. All right, so that would be our conclusion. So our conclusion is that it can be difficult to eat healthy. So right there, um, the third option. <clears throat> All right, a lot of these um, questions on the homework are, um, you know, there's a lot of different options here. You want to pay close attention to what they're asking for. Are they asking for the premise or the conclusion? Um, and then use that little table to help you identify um, either the conclusion or the premise. Um, use these, uh, you know, indicating words to help you figure out which is which. Okay, now we're going to talk about um, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. You should remember this from earlier in the semester. Um, inductive reasoning is where you take specific examples and you draw a general conclusion. So you're going from specific to general. Um, like, for example, um, I failed the first quantitative reasoning test, so I will fail the class. So a specific um, or a specific example is like I failed the, the first quantitative reasoning test. In general, that would be the statement that since I failed the first test, I'm going to fail the whole class. And then we have deductive reasoning, which is the opposite. It starts with a general statement and draws a specific conclusion. So starting with something like, um, it never snows in Brunswick. So that would be a general statement. 
specific would be like it so it never snows in Brunswick therefore it's not going to snow this year so going from general to specific <clears throat> this is going to be important for the next example because it's going to say something like identify if it's using inductive or deductive reasoning um, so make sure that you if you don't already have this memorized, make sure you have this written on your index card for the next test. All right, so we have two definitions here. We've got the definition of a valid argument and then the definition of an invalid argument. Um, so it says a valid argument is a deed. Oops, I thought I had the highlighter there. Let me try again. A valid argument is a deductive argument where the conclusion is guaranteed from the premises. All right, so a valid argument is always deductive. Um, if an argument is inductive, you don't classify it as either valid or invalid. Um, so an invalid argument is an argument where the conclusion is not always guaranteed. All right, so the conclusion is not always guaranteed. <clears throat> so invalid arguments you don't have to worry about classifying those as inductive or, or excuse me as valid or invalid um, so you don't well let's say it this way invalid are I wrote the wrong thing here let me try again I meant to write inductive all right, so for inductive reasoning, you won't have to classify as either valid or invalid. So you won't have to worry about classifying an inductive argument as either valid or invalid. And I'll show you what that means in the next example. All right, so valid arguments are deductive arguments where the conclusion is always guaranteed. <clears throat> and the invalid arguments are arguments where the conclusion is not always guaranteed. All right, so let's look at this example. It says, determine whether the given argument uses inductive or deductive reasoning. If deductive, determine whether the reasoning is valid or invalid. Right, so here's our statement or our argument. The first level of the parking garage is for bank employees only. I do not work in the bank, so I cannot park on the first level. <clears throat> Which part of this is the specific part of the argument? Which part is the specific part? It's the ending part, right? So this part here is specific. So that means whoops if this part is specific let me see if i can get this fixed okay if this part is specific this part must be general all right so let me get a different color pen sorry y'all my my little clicker thing on my pen is not working properly um The first level of the parking garage is for bank employees only. That's a general statement. So if we're going from general to specific, and that's deductive, all right? So we know it's going to be one of the bottom two down here. Now we have to determine if it's valid or invalid. Remember, valid means the conclusion is always guaranteed. Invalid means the conclusion is not always guaranteed. All right, so will I ever be allowed to park on the first level of the parking garage? It says the first level of the parking garage is for bank employees only. That's the only people who are allowed to park on the first level. I don't work in the bank, so I can't park on the first level. Is that always going to be true? Is that conclusion always going to be guaranteed? Yes. So unless I somehow change my job and I now work in the bank, um, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to park on the first level of the parking garage. 
So this would be a valid argument. All right, let's look at some examples of invalid arguments. <clears throat> On number five, it says select all of the arguments that are invalid. So these are gonna be arguments where the conclusion is not guaranteed. All right, so if Mike does his chores, then his mom will give him $50. Mike's mom gave him $50, so he must have done his chores. There's other reasons that Mike's mom could have given him $50, right? So this would be invalid. So this one's invalid. Well, I'm just gonna do a little check mark here. That's invalid. If you smoke, then you are increasing your chance of getting lung cancer. Matt is not increasing his chances of getting lung cancer, so he must not smoke. That's valid, right? Because if Matt is not increasing his chance of getting lung cancer, he must not be a smoker. Okay, so they already told us that smoking increases your chance of getting lung cancer. He's not increasing his chance of getting lung cancer, so therefore he must not be a smoker. All right, so that one is valid. We're only selecting the ones that are invalid. If you make a budget every month, then you will save more money. I'm not saving more money, so I must not be making a budget. All right, so if you make a budget every month, then you will save more money. I am not saving more money, so I must not be making a budget. That would be valid. Um, if you're not saving more money, then you, there's no way that you have a budget because the, you have to assume that this premise is true. If you make a budget, then you will save more money. So this is the assumption. That's the part that we're assuming is true. The conclusion is that it, I'm not saving money, so I must not be making a budget. That would be valid. The last one, if you exercise regularly, then you will sleep better. I haven't been sleeping better, so I must not be exercising regularly. Okay, so one of the ways you can sleep better is to exercise regularly. That's the assumption. If you haven't been sleeping better, that must indicate that you have not been exercising regularly. So that would be a valid argument. So these three down here are valid. This is the only one that's invalid. Sorry, that was so sloppy. All right, you guys, that's everything for section 3.4. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys soon.